President Zelensky bluntly saying that he does believe Ukraine will retake Crimea, which of course was illegally annexed by Russia nearly a decade ago under the Obama administration. When President Obama was in office, I should say. Both Russia and Ukraine both claim ownership over Crimea. It has become this symbolic battleground in the war between Russia and Ukraine. Speaking to the World Economic Forum, President Zelensky said Crimea is, quote, our land, and he urged Western allies to provide him with more weaponry to regain what is ours. And now President Biden may be willing to do just that. According to a new report from The New York Times this morning, they say that despite the hard line that they've taken in the past from the United States, refusing to provide Kyiv with far-reaching weapons, now that line is starting to soften. Of course, the United States has always maintained that Crimea does belong to Ukraine, that it was illegally taken by Russia. But this comes as the U.S. is also set to announce one of the biggest military aid packages to Ukraine since the beginning of this war nearly a year ago. It is expected to be worth two and a half billion dollars and the first time is going to include striker combat vehicles. CNN's Alex Marquardt is joining us now. Alex, good morning. Tell us exactly what these strike, striker vehicles mean to Ukraine and what it is going to do for the forces there on the ground who so clearly need the help. Well, Caitlin, what is notable in this massive new package, expected to be around $2 billion, as you say, is both what is new in it and what is not in it that the Ukrainians have been desperately asking for. The new elements are the striker combat vehicles. They are uh, armored vehicles that will allow Ukrainian troops to be carried across the battlefield, giving the Ukrainians a significant new mechanized capability particularly when combined with the Bradley fighting vehicles, which were just committed uh, to Ukraine by the United States in the last aid package earlier this month, which was and is to, this, to, to date the biggest military aid package. Those two together uh, will allow Ukrainians to really go on the offensive to try to take back territory. Now, the striker is lighter and faster than the Bradley. But the two together really do give the Ukrainians a significant new mechanized capability. And Alex, this also comes as there's this remarkable showdown happening between the United States and Germany. It seems to be uh, kind of percolating here where there is this new German defense minister over the decision about sending tanks to Ukraine. What's the latest on that? Well, Caitlin, the U.S. does want Ukraine to get new Western tanks. They are not sending their own tanks, American tanks, because they're too logistically uh, challenging. The, the tank that most have settled on that would be best for the Ukrainian fight is the Leopard 2, which, as you say, is made by Germany. In fact, the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, is in Germany as we speak, in Berlin, meeting with his German counterpart to press the Germans to send this tank to Ukraine. Now, the Germans have said they don't want to go this alone. They don't want to be the only country out there doing that. And other countries are saying, we're ready to go with you. The Brits have committed a squadron of their tanks. Other European countries saying they're ready to send their Leopard tanks if Germany gives the word. Germany has to give permission because these are German tanks. Uh, senior defense officials saying just yesterday they are very optimistic that they can get Germany to that point by the end of the week, Caitlin. All right, we'll see what Secretary Austin does. Alex, thank you. Joining me now is the former president of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko. Thank you so much, Mr. President, for the time today. So there you heard it. The U.S. had to deliver striker combat vehicles for the first time and additional Bradley fighting vehicles. How significant will this new equipment be for the country? First of all, I want to thank United States people, United States government and president for the great leadership uh, you play in supporting Ukraine and in protecting the free world against the Russian aggression. I can uh, name that this is the game changer because uh, 200 uh, armed vehicles from Canada, 200 armed vehicles from Great Britain, and 50 from Sweden, some from the Altogether, we expected that that should be about 1,000 uh, armed uh, personal carrier. And this is the really help us to stop the Russian offensive operation and to provide the counter offensive operation already within two or three months. This is this. I'm just returned back from Bakhmut and uh, uh, we know exactly what is the situation on the east of our country. And this is extremely difficult because the Putin concentrated everything he can for the for this attack, and we ruin Putin plan, and uh, we applaud the transatlantic leadership of uh, United States, and we think that the 
everybody now understand that we are not only protecting Ukraine and you are not only supporting and helping Ukraine, we together uh, protect freedom, democracy of the whole free world. There appears to have been a change in strategy, Mr. President, in terms of how far the U.S. is willing to aid Ukraine uh, against Russia. Prior to the last few days, the U.S. was set on the February 23rd boundaries there in terms of whatever it would take to get to the negotiating table. Now it seems that the United States seems open for Ukraine to actually take back or attempt to take back Crimea by providing Ukraine with weaponry to at least attack that land bridge connecting Russia to Crimea. Of course, Crimea was illegally annexed by Russia in 2014. Ukraine has always been defiant. That is your mission to take back Crimea. You say it is yours. I'm curious to get your response to what appears to be a shift in strategy on the U.S.'s part, too. First of all, uh, Ukraine never have any doubts that we should release from Russian aggressor every single piece of Ukrainian territory. And the only factor that we can free and provide the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine on all, all the territory, including the Donbass and including the Crimea. And uh, with that situation, uh, we... Uh, I personally don't see any changes in Ukrainian policy, and I don't see practically uh, changes in the American policy, because me as a president all five years feel the strong and reliable support of the United States, including Crimean question. We need the more support from the United States in the other question, because I can confirm you that it would be impossible, the peace, without Ukrainian membership in NATO. And with that situation, we really mm -hmm. also expect the great leadership of the United States, because Ukraine now already passed the most difficult exams for, uh, uh, for being the candidate in NATO. And mm -hmm. NATO need now Ukraine as much as Ukraine need NATO. So Mr. we really count on your support. Mr. President, if I could just get you to weigh in uh, as we conclude here on what your thoughts are, what your message would be to uh, German Chancellor Schultz, uh, given that there appears to be a bit of a conundrum with regards to the other heavy weaponry that you need right now, and that is tanks. The United States says they are not going to be sending Abrams tanks, but they are in favor uh, of Germany sending their Leopard tanks. There are about 2,000 Leopard tanks that have been distributed to other NATO allies. Germany at this point has said they will not do so and not even permit other countries to deliver tanks to Ukraine unless the United States delivers its own tanks. What do you think Germany's up to here, and what is your message to Chancellor Schultz when he says that he won't bring you tanks now? Look, the whole Western world, the NATO, should learn unity. You should learn how to speak one voice policy. Germany, United States, and other member states. At the end of the day, we can bring to the situation that Poland uh, and other NATO member states will supply for us the tank without the permission of Germany. It can be challenger from the United Kingdom, uh, the Leopard from Germany and others. We definitely now need the tank. Without tank, it is impossible to provide the offensive operation. And if we expecting that we should, uh, through Russian aggressor away from uh, Ukrainian territory, this is impossible without air defense. This is very difficult without jet fighter. And this is impossible without the tank. All and right, the Pitch. sooner we do that, the better. Mm. And this is my message to Chancellor Scholz. I know him. And... Mm. Uh, Chancellor, from the position of the Germany, uh, now it's uh, strongly connected with the position of NATO. And in other messages, that the whole European people support supply of Ukraine, the tanks. All right, and well, Ukraine President may be paying significantly higher price than Germany. 
Well, President Petro Poroshenko, we appreciate your time. We'll have to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for joining it's us. A Stay safe. Yeah. Stay safe.